It was a day from hell at the office. Your boss dropped a deadline bomb on you that felt totally impossible to meet. The gossip queen of the office would not leave you alone. You left your healthy lunch on the kitchen counter, only leaving you to say, screw it, and get a juicy burger and salty fries instead that left you bloated and crabby. The traffic was exceptionally horrible. And now, on top of all of that, you have to think about organizing the holiday plans, presents, travel, and shopping. What do you do? You get out of your car, you walk through the front door, and you beeline it to the kitchen, ready to shove just about anything into your mouth. Salty Doritos, creamy ice cream, a glass of wine, M&M's. Just anything to help you forget about this shitty day and relax your body. (sighs) Sound familiar? So for the month of December, we're going to be talking about emotional eating. And as you know, Wildly Alive is designed off of four pillars. And this pillar is the eating pillar. To just remind you of the four pillars, we have eating, movement, mindset, and lifestyle. Okay, before I get into the coaching portion of this audio, I want to let you know that I did open the doors to that new mini program, Create a Kick-Ass Holiday. So we started on December 3rd, so you really haven't missed much if you want to jump in, but this is all about creating a really kick-ass holiday because there's so much to do, right? We got to organize all the activities. We have to cook. We have to decorate. We have to clean. We have to shop. We have to deal with stressed out people. We have to figure out how to deal with unrealistic expectations. We're tempted with all the junk food and quote-unquote goodies lying around. You have family members you have to hang out with that you don't necessarily like to hang out with. You have to deal with grouchy people, long lines, germs, traveling, holiday parties, right? That's a big one. Holiday parties, what to wear, the social anxiety that that can cause. And on top of all of it, with all of this stress, we tend to get sick. So with all of these stressors during the holidays, We run to food and we turn on ourselves. It's a very unhealthy habit that us women have that when we start to stress out, the the minute we start to stress, we turn on ourselves. So we start to discipline ourselves with food and we are extremely mean to ourselves, Helga, when we look in the mirror. We, uh, we really take it out on our bodies. And so I really want to anchor in and change this habit for good and make this holiday season about feeling good, feeling good in your body, being proud of your body as you navigate the extra stressors, right? To be able to navigate the buffet table, the stressful family members, all of those things. So you don't run to the food and you don't turn on yourself. And here's the best part of the program. It's going to take practically no time or energy on your part. All you need is a smartphone. And when you get the audios, the short audios that you'll get two to three times a week, all you have to do is press play and let the positive message wash over your body, relax you, ground you into the moment, and remind you of how to handle this season in a way that is self-loving. It's going to be super, super fun. I'm actually really looking forward to it because I need these reminders just like anybody else. And um, yeah, it's, it's again, it's not going to, I'm not here to add more stress into your life. I'm here to make things easier on you. And that's the entire intention of this program. That's why it's going to take no energy on your part at all. Besides just listening, that's it. And then the actionable and the practical advice and the tools and stuff you'll be getting will really help you start to shift when you're being triggered because this is a time of the year when we are being triggered all over the place. 
So I would love for you to join us. It is not too late. Go to wildlyalive.com slash holiday and it will direct you to the page. It's super affordable. You can sign up for less than a dollar a day. It's six weeks. So we start December 3rd and then we will end um, January 6th to really get you started into the new year. And I have some bonuses around that as well um, to really start off January 1 feeling good, feeling proud, feeling like the badass woman that you really, really are. So again, go to wildlyalive.com slash holiday and you can learn more about this kick-ass program. (laughs) Okay, so um, back to what we're talking about for the month of December, which is emotional eating. So when I was struggling with my weight and self-image, I had a terrible relationship with food. To call it dysfunctional is an understatement. It was something I rewarded myself with. It was something that I disciplined myself with. It was merely a number. It was, I was a huge calorie counter, right? So food was just about the number. That's it. It was something that just made me fat, basically. That's all food was for me for the longest period of time. So our first step here is, to healing yourself from emotional eating is figuring out what food really means to you and teaching you how to start uncovering uncovering that so you can really start healing. Okay, what does food really mean to you? Again, like I said, for the longest time when I had a really dysfunctional relationship with my body and food, all food was to me was something that made me fat. The the least amount of it I could eat, the better, right? And to and to me at that time, my body was also just this thing that hung on me. That's it. This thing that was never right ever. So again, we're going to really think about what you think about food. Your emotions behind food. So if we go back to our very first experience with food, let's think about that. When we were infants, what was that like? What was our experience like with food? How did we feel? We felt warm. We were wrapped up in our mother's or father's arms. We were getting nourishing milk. We were feeling love. We were experiencing love and food simultaneously. It's not like as infants we could disassociate those two and say, well, this is food and this is love, right? It was one experience together. Okay, stick with me here. Stick with me. Then as we grow up, what happens? We we have more and more experiences of food and love together. At weddings, birthday parties, graduations, family functions. When you're sitting around the table with the people you love the most. It is food and love together. So when you start to accept the idea that food and love can be in the same experience and highlight, underline, bold, there is nothing wrong with that, you actually start to automatically make food choices that come from a source of love. Okay. I want, you to, I want you to just take a minute and soak that in because this, is, this was a big thing for me to learn. Big. Because for so long we've been told that eating for love is bad, right? That a, a emotional eating, in a sense, is really, really bad and unhealthy. But if we can start to see why this happens and kind of dismantle it and not shame it, then we actually choose foods from a source of love. Okay, so what does that mean? What does it mean, choosing foods from a source of love? That means choosing foods that are nourished by the soil, the sun, the rain, by somebody else preparing it, right? And if you eat meat, that means choosing meats that are organic or have um, a humane label on it. They sometimes talk about the ethical standards and how they raise their animals. So you can see that when you're choosing foods from a source of love, you're choosing foods that love you back. You're choosing foods that love you back. 
So it's okay to eat food and feel love at the same time. And when you do that, you actually start choosing foods that love you back. Because so often we have a rough day, like I gave that example at the beginning of the audio, and we say, oh, it's been such a rough day. I deserve a treat. But let's be real, sister. When you eat that quote unquote treat that is typically processed carbs, it's junk food, it is heavy cheeses or, um, or something like that, lots of sugar in them. Is that really a reward? Like, let's really think about that. Let's really think about how you're going to feel after eating half of a pan of brownies as a reward. Is it really a reward? You're unconsciously disciplining yourself. That's what's going on. So again, if we're choosing foods that love you back, when we're allowing food and love to coexist in the same experience, we won't want to choose foods that are chemically made in some plant. Foods that are really designed to hurt our bodies, hurt our children, hurt our loved ones, and cause unhealthy addictions. We just wouldn't want to do that anymore because we really start to understand and accept that food is love. And we want the food to love us back. We want it to be a healthy relationship. Right? So so listen loud and clear here, sister. Food is not the problem. Food is not the problem. Stop denying, denying it. Stop looking at it like something that you discipline yourself with. It is something that nourishes you. It is something that makes you feel good. It is something that gives you energy and helps you show up to be the woman you've always wanted to be. That's what food has the ability to do for you when you start to look at it as a source of love. Right? You want more energy. You want more confidence. You want to feel fit. You want to feel strong. You want to feel healthy. You don't want to get sick all the time. Food has the ability to do all of those things for you if you start to look at it that way. Again, this is why I am not a fan of counting calories, counting points, and none of that. Because food has such a deeper relationship than you could even imagine. So when you're choosing foods to eat from here on out, I just want you to remember this conversation that we're having right here, okay? That food is love, And choose foods that love you back because you deserve love. And that's a whole other ballgame around like self-worth and stuff like that. But you really have to see that you deserve to feel confident. You deserve to feel full of energy. You deserve to feel healthy. And rewarding yourself with a nourishing meal is the best thing you can do after a stressful day. Okay? So... That's one big topic I wanted to lead with. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit and you'll see how they kind of tie in. So again, as I mentioned before, I had a really dysfunctional relationship with my body and food. Um, I rewarded myself with it. I disciplined. um, I abused my body, which is kind of an intense word, but really looking back on it, that's how I was. I was abusive to my body. I was really mean to her when I looked in the mirror. Um... I forced her to work out when she didn't need to work out. She was tired. Um, I gave her too much sleep, too much processed carbs, not enough water, not enough sleep, right? Um, And so anyway, I'll never forget those moments in the kitchen when I would binge, binge out on junk food for what felt like hours, right? I was a big binger. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced kind of those nighttime binges, but that's that was the time of day I always feared. I especially feared being home alone because I didn't trust myself with food. So that translated to a lot of binge eating. Um, I remember those days like it was yesterday, leaning up against the cabinet in my apartment, shoveling ice cream into my mouth, And while I was shoveling it in my mouth, all I would be thinking about is the next thing I was going to eat. I was totally in my head, nowhere near in my body, and 
not present whatsoever. It was like very anxiety ridden. So you, again, as we've talked about food is love, and I know that that is a, a belief that is really hard to cultivate and embody right away, especially when we're in a society that tells you all food is is a number, all you need to do re- is restrict to change your body. But, but again, like Wildly Alive is not about only changing your body. This is about finding self-love, finding self-care from a place that is rooted in love, not in fear. Like, I deserve to feel good. I deserve to feel proud of my body. And that's where change is stemming from. And I really want to make it clear that when you really start to live and feel that, eating foods, when you start to feel that food is love and, and that whole concept you'll you'll be less likely to eat because you are stressed, sad, depressed, or whatever you may feel. It'll happen much less often. Do you see how this ties into the emotional eating aspect? So I really want to give you some tools on how to handle something like stress eating because man oh man, does that happen during the holiday season, right? And there is so many tempting foods out there. But I think stress eating, even aside from holidays, is something most women struggle with. And I've obviously struggled with it myself. So I wanted to give you some tangible tools to really take action on today. And remember, as you go into the holiday season, again, save this audio somewhere. Find a way to revisit it and re-listen to it as you go through the holidays because for the month of December, we're only going to have one audio. This is the only audio that's going to come out for the month of December. Typically, you get two. Um, But because I have a lot of family in town and I want to take a break too, there's only going to be this one audio. So save it, highlight it, find a way to keep it in your phone so you can re-listen to it over and over again so we can calm you down, keep you relaxed, and not reaching for the food. And if you want ongoing support where you're getting audios in sent to your phone, notifications to your phone, again, check out the Create a Kick-Ass Holiday program at wildlyalive.com slash holiday. Super affordable, and it will keep all of this stuff top of mind and so much more. So, okay, let's talk about stress eating. The best way for me to, 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 to describe how to manage this is to paint a picture. Okay, so let's go back to the example that I got that I was saying at the beginning of the audio. You had a stressful day, the gossip queen, the boss drops a deadline, da 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 the principal may be called because your kids are acting up, right? Maybe your husband's being kind of an a-hole. Um, all of this stress and anxiety, you just have all this stress and anxiety in your body, right? Like you're, you're feeling like you want to blow, basically. And you're, it's like continuing to escalate. You get home, you, and you, you can't, at that point, your emotions are so visceral and it's so obvious in your body that your automatic pattern is to just grab the chocolate, grab the chips, anything to just help your body relax instantly. And unfortunately, that is something that food can do, (laughs) but it's not a healthy way, right? It's not a healthy relationship. Um, But here's where the change happens. First, awareness. Recognizing what's going on inside of your body. Feeling the anxiousness. Feeling the stress. Recognizing I am stress. Awareness is the first step to change, okay? Okay. Again, like this is not an overnight process. This is going to take time to really anchor in. But awareness comes first. Then the second step in this whole thing is to replace the food with an experience. So in this case, we're talking about stress. So what is your body seeking? When you're stressed and you're, you're wanting to the food, what is your body seeking? Relief, right? Relaxation. So what are some experiences that you can have that will invoke a feeling of relief? What are some things that you can do in that moment to get yourself to relax without the food? You could take a bath. I know that's not always possible. But um, you could go into your room, lay on the floor, 
put your feet up, put your hand on your belly, feel your belly breathing for 10 breaths. I mean, that could make, that could take you two minutes, sister. Okay. No excuses here. You could go outside. You could let the sun hit your face. You could take a 10 deep breaths of fresh air, really feeling your belly expand in the inhale and contract with the exhale. If it's warm out, you could take your shoes off and put your feet in the grass, getting yourself grounded. There is scientific evidence in getting your skin touching the earth and how that relaxes you and it's healing. You could go for a walk. You could go for a walk without any distractions, okay? Like really getting present, looking at the trees, looking around, noticing what you smell, noticing your senses, and even saying, oh, there's a tree. There's a rock. There's a cloud. Like even just something like that, like naming all the things you can see really gets you present in the moment. There is, again, there's a lot of brain research around naming things in your environment helps you get present. It kind of switches how your brain is operating. You could stretch. You could maybe use some essential oils if you're into that. Right, having this list is really important to rewiring your mind for a healthy means of stress management. Because right now, your mind is wired that when I'm stressed, I need food. That's how it's wired. But when we can become aware and we can have this backup plan, having this action plan written down, maybe it's in your cabinet where the chips are, in your refrigerator, and say, feeling stressed, Try this, 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 or this first. Do not tell yourself you cannot have the food. That is not a healthy technique, okay? Never works. Say, let's just try this first, and if I still want the food, um, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, right? So then we start to shift the pattern. It takes some time. Be compassionate with yourself. Know that you've had this habit for a really long time, so it's going to take a little bit, okay? Come back to this audio, remind yourself. So there you have it, okay? Food is love and creating some sort of an action plan to experience, create an experience instead of choosing the food, okay? So those are the two things that I really want you to work on during this holiday season. Now, let's really anchor this in, okay? Let's get into this. Let's just try to get here in the moment, okay? And let's just call this in. Let's just call this in. Let's let some things go and welcome something in. So what are we going to let go of here? going to let go of the desire for food when I'm feeling emotional. going to let that go. I'm going to let go the need to numb out need to numb it out. I'm going to welcome in all of my feelings. Not afraid of my feelings. I'm going to welcome them in. There is no feeling out there that can hurt me. I'm going to welcome in this idea that food is love, food is nourishing, food can make me feel good. I'm going to welcome in big, ugly cries. (laughs) Big, ugly cries. That's okay. I'm not afraid of my tears. I'm not afraid of my emotions. I welcome them in. They are what is what lights life up, is emotion, and I'm gonna allow all of them into my life. I'm gonna let go of this fear of my emotions, of the belief that food is the problem. I'm gonna let that go. Food is not the problem. Food is not the problem. Food is love. I'm going to let go of the need to use food to relax. I don't need food to relax. I have lots of other ways I can relax. I have a whole list of things that I can do that can help me relax. I don't need food to help me relax. I'm going to welcome in screaming loud into a pillow when I'm pissed off. I'm not afraid of my anger. No, I'm not afraid of my anger. I'm going to welcome in speaking my truth, speaking up when I feel something in my throat and it's, it's my voice wanting to come through. I speak it. I'm going to welcome that in. I'm going to welcome in not taking things so personally, shaking things off, 
right? Not taking things so personally. I'm gonna let go disciplining myself with food or rewarding myself with food, whatever my, whatever the trick my mind uses, I'm gonna no longer use food as rewarding or disciplining. Food is love. Food is something that gives me energy. Food is something that makes me feel good. Food is something that makes me show up and be the woman that I wanna be. Food can heal me. That is what food is. I'm gonna welcome in forgiveness. Forgiving people when they hurt my feelings. Forgiving myself when I screw up. I'm gonna welcome in forgiveness. I'm gonna welcome in having a healthy relationship with food. I'm gonna welcome in loving my body back with food. And I'm gonna let go of this unhealthy dynamic I have with food. Food is my friend. That's what food is to me. It's not my friend that sits around with me when I'm depressed, drinking wine, watching too much TV. Food is something that helps me have energy, helps me feel good. That's what food is to me. So I'm letting all that go. I'm letting the desire to use food to fill an emotion. I'm letting go the need to numb, letting go of the fear of my emotions. I'm welcoming in all of my emotions. I love all of my emotions. Every single emotion is welcome here. I welcome in speaking up. I welcome in forgiveness. I let go of the fear of food. I let go of the need to use food to relax. I let go of disciplining and rewarding myself with food and I welcome in a healthy relationship with food. I welcome in screaming loud into a pillow, having big ugly cries, speaking my voice that deserves to be heard, and loving every emotion that courses through my body. Good, deep breath in, and let's just put your hands up overhead and just really welcome that in if you can here. Just see that welcoming in, changing, how you think and feel about food right here, how you respond to stress. Let's just anchor that in one last time. Hands up in the air, heart open, ready to receive. I'm ready, it's my time. Yes, great work. All right, well, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Please, again, listen to this recording over and over again to really help you change how you respond to stress, especially during this holiday season. And as always, if you're not having fun, it is your own damn fault. (laughs) All right, sister. See you later. Bye.